Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Russian tier 10 medium tank, the Object 430U. Now this is one of the many Russian medium tanks that are at tier 10 and it's really different to all the others. Well, okay, the actual Object 430 is slightly different now, right? I was going to say, all the other Russian mediums have a 100mm gun, they all have that 320 alpha, just different kinds of DPMs, accuracies, etc, etc, and obviously different armour profiles. And then this one was different because it had a 122mm gun. Now, obviously, the 430 has a 122mm gun, which has insane DPM on it, and does definitely make that tank different now, and... Brings that gun a little bit more in line with this one, but that 122mm has 390 alpha, whereas this 122mm has 440. The trade-off is that the this 430U gets very, very good armour. It has a very, very good turret, which is very Russian, and it also has very, very good hull armour. It's more akin, at times, to a heavy tank than a medium tank, the 430U, but it does have one thing that all the Russian mediums have, and that is also absolutely fantastic camo. Which, yeah, for a tank that's got such good armour, is a really nice feature as well. It means you can be damn stealthy. This gun, like I say, is damn nice. It hits for 440. The reload is a little bit slow at times, at 10.10 .10 seconds on the reload for 440. But you can still make it work. I mean, it did get nerfed down to that a long time ago. It did used to be quicker. But yeah, the, the armour and the... Well, the armour of the tank and the gun is what is nice about this thing. The one thing you do have to be careful of, though, with this 122mm gun is that it sometimes can be a little bit of a troll and be a little bit derpy, which is just something you've got to factor in. I mean, you do have... If you think about the other Russian meds and they're using that 105 the 105 100mm gun and they're firing APCR with 1500 meters of standard shell velocity the 430U has this 122 with 940 shell velocity on both its AP and its heat and its HE as well so you do have to lead your targets really really damn well and the fact that you also have 0.4 base accuracy on this tank as well is something that you have to contend with because it does like to derp at times. It does like to just go, yeah, you know what, that piece of ground right there, I don't like that, and it will shoot it. You also have 5 degrees of gun depression, which does make the tank a little bit awkward on a ridgeline, which you're going to see a little bit in this tank, In sorry, in this game on proc, where you just have to ex overexpose a little bit to get shots where you want to, and it can make it a little, little bit awkward. But on the whole, the 430U has always been a pretty damn solid tank. I've always enjoyed it because of the mix of armor, camo, really nice, well, you know, nice alpha, etc. It always made it a fairly fun tank to play. And, yeah, I just, I just always enjoyed it. It is a little bit slower as well because it has that extra armor on it. It does only go at 48 kilometers an hour as opposed to some of the other tanks that are going at, like, yeah, 55, I think, is most of the Russian mediums these days. So you do have to bear that in mind. You're more of a M48 pattern in terms of speed, but hey ho. In terms of a crew, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Trap Mechanic, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise. I run Camouflage Expertise because yes, this tank does have good camo, and I just want to make it that little bit better if I can, because I'm not taking anything else to buff the camo, so I again, I just want to make it that little bit better. And then... All the gun perks, because like I say, this gun can be pretty damn derpy at 0.4 base accuracy, as well as the having the aim time of 2.3 seconds, which, again, can, especially when you're firing distance and you've come to a full stop, can feel a little bit slow to get the gun aimed in at times. And in terms of equipment, I run the advanced loader, vertical stabilizers, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself, because I can get it up to 458 view range without a crew. Which is really damn nice. Vertical stabilizers, because like I say, this gun can be very unwieldy at times. And then the loader to make my DPM better. So as you can see in this first game on proc, it's not going well. It is really not. It seems to be that we're whittling down tanks, but we're not finishing them off. We're up to 3.6k damage with 3.8k assistance. And that AVRE is very, very locked in on shooting me. 
which we, we have to get rid of this guy. He's already shot me quite a few times. And in fact, I think I've actually lost most of my health to the AVRE, which is really awkward. And I'm looking at this position going, this position's working. I'm getting lots of spotting. I'm spotting for all the guys that are sat at J2. But we're just we're losing everywhere else. And it's just the team's crumbling, which means I'm looking at this going, I think I'm going to die. I think this is I think this is my position where I'm stuck. I'm gonna die here. I'm trying to keep everything lit for my team down in the corner to shoot. But as soon as we've lost and that that's where the gun can be derpy, by the way. As soon as we lost that corner at K six, I was like, Yeah, I'm doomed. We're doomed. And you just gotta try and push what we can out of this game. That chieftain's pushed into a very aggressive position where he can probably spot the guys in the corner. We're just trying our best to keep this gun flowing. And unfortunately, we missed a shot on that TVP 50 slash 51 there. But he does keep coming over, so it's like, well, don't mind if I do. We end up shutting him down for 456. Nice roll. Now there's a 4005 that's come over, so we're going to see if we can poke over and get a shot into his turret. Slap a big shot into his turret face, and he's starting to get shot by the guys at the back. And uh, to be honest, I was fully expecting more shots to be flying in at this guy, especially with the guys in the corner and the fact that he's way on top of the ridge line. And there we go, he ends up getting shut down. We're up to 5.4k assistance with 5.9k damage. We're just trying to get a shot into this leper PTA, and then we get shot from behind by something we cannot see. And unfortunately, that is a bat chat. We ping where he is, and it's like, well... Yeah, we've lost. And unfortunately, we did lose that game. Finished with a defeat. 6.2k damage, 5.5k assistance. That's like, what, 11.7k combined. Ace tank of the high caliber. 1175 base XP on a loss, which is a pretty damn nice game. We took up a position. We were spotting. We were getting the damage out. But unfortunately, we just couldn't do it quick enough. And we weren't also picking up the kills. Whereas the enemy team were finishing off our tanks everywhere. And basically took control of the map. And that's what happens when you lose control of the map. If you don't have control of the map, you're never going to win because they'll always get better positions to shoot at you, whereas you will be stuck in positions where you can't deal with them quite as well. So we're on to the second replay. In this second replay, we are on Arctic region. And we are going to go to... Well, we're going to push very aggressively. My first thought is to push to C2. And try and sort of sit in that little dip there where I can sort of be a little bit hauled down. Start getting shots at people that push up the one line and dish out the damage. But also I'm thinking, you know, I could push to C3. And then from C3 I can try and shoot the people that cross the two line. And also try and get shots at guys in the dip. And we're just going to push very, very aggressively because that's the best way. I'm not a big fan of sitting on this ridge here. Because it tends to lead to them pushing aggressively and catching you out. And you tend to die pretty annoyingly from that position. Also, if there's people at E4, it tends to not go very well. Because, or sorry, people at E4, people at F6 as well. Because they can get side shots at you on that ridge. But if you do take a position like this that I'm taking, you do need a little bit of help. And unfortunately, my team has basically stopped. Which means that I haven't quite realised. And I am very aggressively forward. Which means I'm kind of alone, which is not a good time. And I've realised, okay, these heavies are pushing up. And mm, what do I do here? Do I stay up here or do I go down and try and face them? You know what? We're going to see if we can try and go up again and get another shot into this waffle or spot him up. We're not spotting the Conway. Slap a shot through the side of his turret. And then it's like, hang on a minute. I think these heavy tanks are actually pushing up. As you can see on the map, it's like, yes, they are. There's the Conqueror. So we're going to use this position, which could be quite useful for a tank like the 430U. Because there's lots of positions I can cover my lower plate, have my upper plate at a really weird angle. And possibly bounce a lot of damage while trying to stick the damage out myself. And unfortunately, we ended up bouncing on the side of the Conqueror at the first shot, which is really awkward. We end up bouncing both the shot from the Conqueror and the 4705A, though. And we are getting a little bit of help from somewhere but they are starting to take hits i think it was artillery now the object 705a is coming up we get a shot in to track him in place so to stop him progressing and yes artillery is dishing out the damage and this replay was from a little while ago so i think this is actually before artillery 2.0 as well so bear that in mind when they are getting hit a lot harder and yeah we we we've got the perfect position we're covering our lower plate We've got the upper plate at a weird angle, and we've just got to keep moving. We don't want to sit still, because sitting still will mean that our armor 
is easy for them to pick off. That Conqueror ends up getting shut down by the GW Tiger Pig. The 705A is backing up, so we're going to try and keep poking out to get some shots into him. Then we notice the 260, and it's like, okay, that 260 is in a really awkward spot. Let's try and side scrape off of this rock and see if we can start trying to get shots into his drive. We're going to track him in place. Unfortunately, we bounce off his upper plate. And this is where the 430U is also delightful. Again, it's more like a heavy tank in that way because you can play it like a heavy tank and side scraping and stuff like that works. So we were just looking for a shot into the roof of the 260, but they actually have patched that so you can't really overmatch that roof anymore. He does drive out sideways on for us though, which is really nice. And we're just going to wait for this gun to go in, go for the drive wheel to track him in place. He is firing heat so it gets absorbed into my tracks. And thankfully, my artillery shuts down that 260. Now there's a Waffle E100, and it's like, hello, Mr. Waffle E100, what is going on? They're all coming in. We're up to 4.3k damage or 3.2k assistance, and we're just, again, side scraping off this rock, trying to get a tracking shot into that Waffle E100. Doesn't quite come off. The 705A comes in, and I'm like, okay, he's penning me this time. But thankfully, he bounces off of my upper plate, and we shut down the 705A. We know that Waffle E100 has fired his clip now, so we're going to go in, rush him, and shut him down. But he ends up getting shut down by the Concept 1B, who's finally moved up and yeah we're up to 4.9k damage with 3.6k assistance what that's 8 8k combined oh eight and a half k combined in a matter of four minutes because we had a position that just was perfect for the 430u they pushed into positions where i could get shots into them and i could basically stay hull down keep my upper plate at a weird angle for them and yeah just keep spotting them for my team or for my artillery especially at that point so as you can see, we're trying to angle for a shot at this T30. Unfortunately, we go for the side of the turret of the T30. It just ricochets off a weird angle of him. And I'm just staying up in this position because I can actually get shots at them here as my light tank is lighting them up. And unfortunately, we, we bounce again off that T30. We're just trying for a weird angles on that guy. But we can't... We just can't get the pen into it. So it's like, okay, you know what? We need to move up now. This is, this is where we need to move. There is... Eight tanks left on the enemy team. Two artillery and six actual tanks. There's a Conway at F2 that we know of. There's the guy in the corner at G1. And then we can see there's the heavy tank and medium tank that are at J4. So what we're going to do is we're going to push up down the 4-5 line. Because doing this, we are going to try and get up behind stuff like the Conway. And try and get to a position where we can get some other shots into that T-30 at G1. we just got to be very careful that there's nothing at G4. Because if there's something at G4, if when we go down this way, it can lead to some awkward, awkward times for us. So we did manage to get the shot in to shut down that other tank there. We're up to 5.1k damage. And... Um, at this point, we're just trying to get there to get some shots into the enemy team before they fully collapse. You can see the Conway's now getting attacked, and there's the other TD. It's not actually above us, but then it's like, okay, there's the Udez. That's, he's in a position that we didn't quite want him to be. We get a shot into that Udez, puts us up to 5.5k damage. We bounce him off our turret, and it's like, no, I can't. I can't go back up on that ridge line because he's just going to get an easy pen. I may have bounced him that time, but yeah, we... We don't want to give him easy pens and shut us down. We're going to try and get into a position where we can either shoot this Udez in the side. Oh, actually, he gets shut down by Rossi. And we're going to try and get up behind the two TDs. But the two TDs blow up all of a sudden really quickly. And Swindle goes and gets the T92. As you can see, before Artillery 2.0, it's only got 500 hit points. And we finish the game with the victory. Three kills, 5.5k damage, 3.6k assistance, 3.6k blocked. The Brothers in Arms, Ace Tank of the High Calibre. 1831 base XP, a really nice game for the 430U. Again, showing what it is very, very capable of. And just showing how nice that armor can be in certain situations as well. And if you can keep dishing out that 440 Alpha, you'll have a good time with the 430U. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.